then whether the back pain is associated with all these things each and everything has an importance if it is associated with fever that means an infectious pathology sometimes inflammatory and if there is a morning stiffness i told you it is either instability or most importantly inflammation what are the inflammatory conditions ankylosing spondylitis zero negative spondylo arthropathy rheumatoid those things should come to your mind early morning stiffness yes it can be that right also it's swelling cachexia weight loss cough think of malignancies or even tuberculosis cough ha having done so much now we have come to clinical examination what do you do having learned the theory part of it all this while we have been learning what are all the causes of back ache having learned and having a database what to see now let us see what is going wrong with the back now once you come to this phase clinical examination first you have to inspect the patient strip him and then see examine in detail because everything matters and counts when it comes to this patient may not be standing straight there can be a tilt it's called as sciatic list or sciatic tilt okay sometimes because of pain what happens suppose your disc on the right side has got protruded or extruded now you tilt it on to the other side again there are controversies regarding this whether the disc protrusion is in the shoulder or axilla let me not go into so much of details suppose you have a disc protrusion on the right side what will you do you try to open up the disc space that side slowly you try to bend on the other side right simple just, just this bending is called a sciatic tilt list simple standing itself will will change sometimes you stoop like this in st- so that you guard your spine and then walk like this okay all those changes they come but how do you identify you have to first strip the patient and clinically examine and see for neurocutaneous markers a superficial markers scaphoid spots hair abnormal hair there can indicate a bony problem or a spinal cord problem underneath never ever forget to see these neurocutaneous markers hairy patches lipomata and scaphoid spots they can they can lead you to either a spina bifida or some other problem in the spine right next is go and palpate the patient to see various things that you have learned in surgery local rise of temperature tenderness sacroiliac tenderness hip joint you have to examine everything with respect to spine pelvis as well as hip joint when it comes down to lower limbs right and you should know how to differentiate that point from this point and i'll come there now once we are examining once we are trying to palpate if you can palpate on the spinous process if there is some tenderness that means there is some problem within the bony cage which is forming the neural canal or there can be a paraspinal spasm and the muscles might have become taut you once you put your finger there you feel like a cord string like structure there first palpate that sometimes if there is a spondylolisthesis like this you can feel a step off sometimes you can you have to identify the sciatic nerve and then just press over it if it is inflamed elsewhere because of a root impingement there once you press it here you will have a lot of pain right and once you have palpated you are you have to see for the movements of the spine and these are all the movements of the spine you have to cross check and compare with the normal if they are decreased that means there is something wrong now the most important test what we do is straight leg raising test what happens when you are raising the leg now once we are raising the leg there if at all there is a nerve that is coming from posterior aspect like this like this like this once you are flexing the knee joint keeping the uh, once you are flexing the hip joint keeping the knee straight now you are stretching a nerve root nerve which is coming from the posterior aspect of the spine posterior aspect of the buttock thigh and leg and which is there on the posterior aspect of the sacroiliac joint what is that commonest nerve what you see on the posterior aspect that is sciatic nerve so a straight leg raising test will indicate when you stretch a irritated nerve what will happen it will cry that cry is nothing but pain or once you are eliciting it you elicit a sign this is called a straight leg raising test and how you do it is this is for sciatica or problems associated with root impingement right from what from where will the sciatic nerve come three four five more specifically three four five and s one right if at all you are dealing with these roots more specifically if at all there is a uh, root impingement because of a disc prolapse that means suppose l3 l4 l5 suppose say we are dealing with l4 root which is being pressed that is contributing the sciatic nerve that is going from the posterior aspect of the sacroiliac joint posterior aspect of the hip joint and then coming into the thigh and into the calf like this and it is going continuing as the what 
posterior nerve once this nerve is there like this and if you stretch that nerve by flexing of the hip joint and raising it straight upward this is called straight leg raising test and if your l4 root is impinged and if you are stretching the sciatic nerve by doing the straight leg raising test the nerve is irritated and now you have some symptoms what are those symptoms you will have pain where will the pain be patient will complain of back pain buttock pain thigh pain and leg pain and there is a radiation of this pain at some degree of straight leg raising patient will complain of pain if that degree is less than 40 degrees that means he has significant compression on either of these roots l3 l4 l5 or s1 got it that is straight leg raising test what is lessig test lessig test is same straight leg raising test once the patient complains of pain suppose say at 60 degrees of flexion of the hip joint you ask the patient to flex the knee joint now once he has flexed the knee joint pain will go off because the stretch which is there at this level now you are relieving it by flexing right now once the pain has gone okay you can as well again extend it a back still further flexion of the hip joint will be possible <laughs> but now once you are trying to extend it in this flexor position he will have a lot of pain that is lasik test so it's a modification of the straight leg rest leg raising test what does these things show these things show that if you stretch an irritated nerve root you will have the pain what he was complaining of you are eliciting a sign what he was complaining of which is called as a symptom simple so this is a nerve provocative test now this is for l3 l4 l5 s1 sciatic now how do you test for femoral which is l2 l3 and l4 most often you have to do a stretch of the femoral nerve how do you stretch the femoral nerve by doing an extension of the hip joint you do opposite you ask the patient to lie down prone and do an extension of the hip joint then your femoral nerve is stretched you will have symptoms if at all l2 3 4 roots are compressed got it this is all nerve irritation test next is a test for sacroiliac joint this is called faber's test also called as patrick's test faber means flexion abduction and external rotation that is flexion of the knee joint and hip joint right then abduction of the hip joint and external rotation of the hip joint and once you do it you put pressure on the opposite uh, anterior superiliac spine so that you can stabilize the pelvis and then put pressure on the knee joint so that you press it down what is happening by doing this this sacroiliac joint is opened from anteriorly aspect you are stra straining the sacroiliac joint on this side once you are straining the sacroiliac joint on this side if at all there is a prob problem or inflammation sacroiliac joint you will have extreme pain in the buttock on the posterior aspect of the uh, posterior aspect of the spinal column uh, edging into the buttock right at the sacroiliac joint area this is a more specific test for sacroiliac joint pathology sometimes it so happens if there is a sacroiliac joint pathology still the patient will be complaining of back ache how do you rule out whether it is coming from a disc at one level or it is a sacroiliac joint then you have to do this test right next is jenslen's test this is also a similar test to strain the sacroiliac joint by making the patient come out of the bed and then extend the hip joint you strain both the sacroiliac joints and which are sacroiliac joint is inflamed you will have pain on that side it's called jenslen's test so many additional tests have been described <coughs> it becomes too much right and then after doing those tests you have to measure what do you measure you measure the circumferential diameter if the pathology is for there for so long a time he will end up in wasting of the muscles usually this wasting of the muscles will be there in lower motor neuron lesions if there is a gross impingement on the nerve roots right and then you have to go back and see the neurological examination i told you neurological examination is in two two things you need to examine one motor second is sensory autonomic nervous system comes the third okay so motor system what do you examine power tone and reflexes sensory examination touch pain and temperature what will you get from these examinations you get some abnormality either in the power or reflexes or in the abnormality in the sensation which gives you an information that okay at the level of l4 dermatome there is decreased sensation means what that means there is a compression on the l4 root right now at the l4 is supplying some muscle and i have tested those muscle that muscle for for power and the power in that muscle is less means what that means l4 nerve, nerve root is at, is at stake now you should know what does this l4 supply what does l4 supplies ha that's that's all is about neurological examination l4 to test l4 actually we usually do tbls anterior what does tbls anterior do it inverts it's an inverter strong inverter of the foot you just 
do it against resistance you are testing l4 and if you test the knee jerk it is l4 and if you see the sensation over the medial malleolus right and on the medial border of the foot it is l4 if the sensation over here is decreased that means l4 root might be impinged at the level of l4 l5 disc or l3 l4 disc simple am i clear here those three two discs if they go and press this root you can have either a problem in the power of tibialis anterior or a knee jerk which is diminished or a sensory abnormality in this zone same like l5 extensor hallis is longest there is no jerk and the sensation over the dorsum of the foot is gone if the s1 root is impinged suppose say at the level of l5 s1 there is a paramedian disc and it is compressing on the s1 root what will you observe you will observe a weakness in the muscle which is supplying so which is supplied by s1 this is peroneae usually for testing s1 we test the peroneae peroneus longus and brevis they avoid the foot simple as the patient avoid the foot against resistance if we can't do it that means power is less that means s1 is pressed simple the reflex for s1 is ankle jerk if you see the ankle jerk if it is diminished that means s1 is pressed or impinged that gives you an insight but just by doing these investigations you get an insight directly without even going in for these radiological investigations like radiography ct mr they are all high fi investigations if you can clearly examine the patient there ends the matter you can clearly say okay this fellow is suffering with some problem at this level and hence that is that to confirm those things we do these investigations so when to order when you confirmed by clinical examination then you order these radiological investigations and when you have to order a mri all things cannot be seen on an x ray because you see only bony things in an x ray so most of the soft tissues are implicated in back ache as you have seen muscles ligaments disc so and even spinal cord to see these things more in detail you have to order for an mr and usually we order an mri scan only when you want to operate just remember one thing if you want to operate then order an mri scan simple and when do you operate when there is a neurological type of back ache and when there is a neurological compromise and when something suggests a neurological involvement then you order an mr or a chronic back ache which is not at all getting reduced and patient is eating away your brain then you write okay now there are so many differential diagnoses these are all spondylogenic neurogenic these are and this is all the revision of it this slide is a just a revision of it and how do you treat treatment <laughs> simple medical as well as surgical the best thing is rest if you can give rest to that part that is the best thing that you can give how many days of rest you want to give textbook description is rest for 2 days for acute spondylogenic or mechanical back ache what is that rest rest to the brain first and rest to the spine and no need not lie down on the hard surface there is no description of that sort the surface should be firm it should not be too soft like your five star hotels so that you go in and go up whenever you try to get in and get up or it should not be too hard like this ultimately ending up in so many pressures on your bones and you don't get any sleep muscles should be adequately relaxed so that they can adequately function tomorrow and support your spine if that is not going to happen what is what happens muscles become weak the dynamic supporters become weak and ultimately you will end up in increase in the back ache 